Oh, hello. Welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Look, have, come on in. Have a drink. Why not? Oh, it's quite uncomfortable. Uh, you're about to watch me uh, present my Leicester Square Theatre podcast with my guest, Diane Morgan. Last week, I told you of ways that you could uh, help us make more internet stuff. So go to uh, gofasterstrike.com slash badges, basically, if you want to help with that. But if you want to give me some money, then why not come and see me on my tour called Happy Now? Go to richchain.com slash happy underscore now slash tour. Buy a ticket to that. I'll get some of that money. Come and see us here uh, at the Leicester Square Theatre, uh, recording some more of these. Go to the Leicestersquaretheatre.com. Someone, I'll get some of that money. Go to GoFasterStrike.com and buy m- m- all of my DVDs and books. If everyone who watched this and listened to this bought me bought one of my DVDs, then I could retire. Oh no, I, I would definitely carry on. Uh, and uh, so those are the ways that you can uh, help me and bring up my tiny family and make sure they have enough to eat, or just carry on enjoying this for free because it's here for free. Thanks to all the people who gave to the Kickstarter to do that. Uh, and uh, it will continue to be free. Just tell your friends if you've enjoyed it. That would be a nice thing to do. Uh, anyway, let's sit back and enjoy Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast with Diane Morgan. <laughs> Theatre, please welcome a man who's never had his penis, a marmite penis licked by a cat, is Richard Herring. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You should have killed me last year. So welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast, or as some of the cool kids are calling it, Rahel Estefan. Yes. That's what they do. Uh, that's an Ellis de Pair. That's what they say. Uh, so thank you. That's good. Someone, someone's paying attention. Uh, so uh, um, I was talking last week to a last week's audience uh, who are quite um, very similar to you in a lot of ways. Uh, they um, about some idea about it'd be nice, wouldn't it, if everyone was a baby? If everyone became a baby, that would be nice. But then I thought it might be quite a good sort of zombie film where some people turn into babies, and then if anyone touches those babies, they turn into babies. <laughs> I thought that would be quite a cool... I mean, difficult to read, because they're quite cute. Oh, and then, oh, no, I forgot to turn into a baby. But also, it'd be quite sick, because like, there'd be... If there was like a plane full of people, and then one of them was infected and became a baby, they'd all become babies, and then part of the film would be a plane of babies flying into a mountain. <laughs> I think I would pay to sit. So it would cater to people who like babies. Go, ah, oh, lots of babies, and people who, and then you have to kill the, the babies so they don't infect you. So it's lots of. <laughs> and uh, someone on Twitter came up with a great, a great type for that: zombie babies, zombie babies. And, I, and then it turns out there's already a film called that. So I was quite annoyed about that. And then somehow on Twitter it came up to the idea of uh, having Wombles as zombies, which I could, that would, that would be amazing, right? Overground, underground, it would be an amazing. <laughs> Amazing thing. So well, that's that's what I've been thinking about. There's two. I managed to pitch two films uh, uh, in one night on Twitter. So that's the Zombie Babies and one either Wombies, but that would look like Woomies if you wrote it down. So I think that's it. So I think Zombles is the best. Z- Zombles or Zombie Wombles. I just have to get the rights from Elizabeth Berthoud and maybe Mike Bat. I think I've got the name of the author of that right. Anyone correct me? It was Elizabeth Berthoud who wrote the Wombles. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, Richard. We all knew it was. We just didn't, we didn't want to applaud your excellent <laughs> memory skills. So, uh, I, my, my first guest this week, <laughs> on this week's show, uh, she's probably best known as Various from Robert's Web. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her as that Various. Will you please welcome Diane Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. It's Diane Morgan. <laughs> Pick up a microphone and then you hold it near your face and then we're off. Is this Stuart's? That is, uh, no, I think these are fresh, these are fresh oh, new right. ones that have come out just for us. I didn't, I didn't think they were there, but they are there. There's lots of water down there. Uh, so, do you remember, bit Robert's Web is my, it's not the best name for a TV show. Clever I'll, though, isn't it? It's quite clever, but it's not as good as Improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. <laughs> which if you've been is that in that... real? Yeah. <laughs> But Robert's Webb, because he's called Rob Webb, and he was yeah, about the internet, yeah. inter- yeah. interweb. Yeah. So that was quite good. And he also, was, did he present inside? He was in a web, wasn't he, when he was sort of dressed as a <laughs> That would have been better. He yeah. should have been in a web, yeah. yeah. No, he wasn't. He was just behind a desk. 
<laughs> what did you? What was your various roles in that? I, I did uh, some sketches with Joe Wilkinson. Oh yes, I know. Yeah, beardy Joe Wilkinson. He was very successful now. Uh, <laughs> it, we did some sketches together, some sort of green screen sketches. Oh, okay. They're on the internet. If you'd like I think to I see watched them. some of them. They're very good. I didn't realise they were from Robert's Web. I have more respect for Robert's Web. Oh, no. Another no. one you're thinking of. Not, oh, yeah. not the really good ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the quite poor ones okay. that we made for Robert's Web. Okay. <laughs> good. And uh, so, well, you've been, you've been doing... Comedy and comedy acting. You were in a Ken. You were in a Ken Campbell play. Was that one of the? Films? Yes. We, was Ken Campbell the actor? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I love Ken Campbell. Ken Campbell. Did you meet him? Um, I I didn't. I went to see one of his twenty four hour things, uh, and yeah. then I got too tired and had to go home. Right. Yeah. Because I don't. I like being, I like sleeping. I think that would have been. I don't think that would have been the one you did because that was uh, like yeah. in the nineteen nineties. Yeah, that would have been the one. The same one. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I know. I'm ancient. Yeah. Not look it. Um, but because the first one was in the 60s, I right, think. Yeah, I, mean, I wasn't in that, that one. one. I was in, I was in so the you, 90s. Okay. Because it was the first job I ever got out of drama school. I was unemployed for years after drama school. And I went to this bookshop in Camden wearing this really weird woolly hat because it was winter. <laughs> and because I'd heard there was a notice board in this bookshop for actors that had jobs on it and things. So I went to look at this notice board, really miserable I was, staring at this notice board, and then all of a sudden I heard this voice saying, aren't you an actress? <laughs> and I turned around and thought, oh my God, that's the guy from uh, In Sickness and In Health. He was Alf Garnett's neighbor. And uh, he said, come downstairs, um, I think I might have a part for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Ken. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dirty beggar. <laughs> um, and it was weird. I went downstairs and there was a group of actors all sat in a circle. All the men were wearing red lipstick. <laughs> um, but I, they auditioned me. I got the part. The rest is history. <laughs> I, w I was on in, I think, the 18th hour. Oh, yeah, I didn't see you then. I was meant to review it for the uh, Sunday Times. Oh, really? Yeah, and I honestly, I got, and I love Kane Campbell. Yeah. Uh, and I just couldn't follow it, and I was too, t I was just too tired, but I love sleeping, me. Yeah, no. So, I like, do. going to see a 24 hour play was stupid. I, I nearly think. missed it myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I really, I, I loved him so much. I, 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 um, I wrote a, a thing that I realised I should have got him to be in. Oh. I wrote this thing with, about, uh, so a script sitcom about our local bar in Ballon, which was called. Uh, Goblins, we used to talk about yeah. all the time, but I, 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 an idea of that, um, a Scrabble club running from that, and I realised too late that he would have been a great person He would be. have been perfect. But then also he died four months later, so it was good, you know, it'd been yeah. annoying to get him, and then, and then, like, then he died. And then you'd have to scrap so. the show. Yeah, but it didn't happen anyway. <laughs> so, you know, it would have been good to have him on it. Yeah, it's good died. to have Ken in anything. Yeah. He's yeah. always an asset, wasn't he? He was, he was amazing. He did fantastic on one-man shows. Did you ever see I them? never saw any of them oh, live, but I saw them, you know, yeah. later. Oh, well, dead now. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I've been having a very enjoyable uh, day, weekend, watching uh, two episodes of MASH and bits <laughs> and pieces of that, which is... I, I loved on the radio, I was just to listen to that driving. Did always you? Came on. Well, yeah, when you're driving around. It's kind of... It was oh, quite like late, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, that's because... So, for a comedian, it's fantastic, mm. but it was, it's like a sketch show, but it's... Not like usual Radio 4 sketch yeah. shows where all the men talk in the same voice. Yeah, we slipped through the net at the BBC. Yeah. But they didn't want our TV pilot, though. They then turned it down after three years. Did they? Three years they kept us waiting. And then they went, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, you're sort of mostly just yourselves, whatever characters you are. Yeah, very Which low energy. I like that. Yeah, well, we, did, we yeah. decided, because we both started doing stand-up at the same time and hated it, that we would do sketches and we watched a lot of sketch acts that were around at the time, and a lot of them were sort of bound on stage, very, uh, you know, Oxbridgey. <laughs> no, no offence. Um, <laughs> and just be really full of energy and, and happy, and it was just awful. <laughs> and I thought, if we do something, let's not do that, you know. Let's just go on and just be normal. You know, let's tell them what's happening, what's going to happen, you know. And we did. Yeah. And people liked it. 
Set the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know anything about anything. Yeah. It's a nice relationship you have with Joe in that it's mainly about you, you just don't being, know him. being rude to him. <laughs> it's been... It's, been, it's been quite nasty to him. And there's a lot of stuff that is about him being knocked back by you. Yeah. As a friend and a lover. And yeah. Well, we decided to put that in because... Cause just because it's a man and a woman, people automatically think, oh, well, are they going out? Is there something going? It doesn't necessarily, <laughs> you could just be friends. <laughs> so we always used to do start the show with, you know, oh, tell them we're not going out. <laughs> just to get it out in the open. It looked more like I don't want people thinking I'm going out with you, to be honest. Yeah. From your point of view. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's that as well. Yeah. Uh, and, well, you, you've sort of, You've done a lot of different kind of um, things. So you were stand-up. I've done everything. You've I've done, done everything. I've, I've done tried everything. Acting, stand-up. Yeah. Sketch shows, Sketch short films. Sketch radio, short films. I've been around for ages. <laughs> <laughs> God bless Charlie Brooker. <laughs> 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 how did it? How did the Charlie Brooker thing come about? Because it started. People always ask me that. Like I did a raffle. <laughs> or something. It's a, but it's such a genius character, and it feels like it sort of came. It sort of it's evolved. It's basically though. just me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, if so, then you're very, very funny because it's just like, like someone having, you know, l looking at world events mm. in a slightly stupid, but actually yeah. quite. It's a perceptive. It slices through to the heart Thank of the matter. You. Thank you. I had to audition for it. Did you? Yeah. So it was his. It was a. Was it a written thing or was it? It was because there's a character called Barry Shippey. There is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to hear more about him. What, is, <laughs> what he's like in real life. <laughs> and uh, they wanted a female Barry Shippey. They yeah. decided, but they wanted someone posh. So that it didn't look like we were taking the piss out of people with regional accents. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's called Philomena, because she was meant to be quite right. posh. But then I turned up, I did my posh bit, and I said, actually, can I try it in my own accent? Because I think it's funnier. And they were like, oh, I'm not so sure about that. I'll go on then. So I did it, and, uh, and then didn't hear anything for ages, and then, <laughs> then I heard I got, got the job. Right. Mm. I think, I think there's a lot to be said about it. And when I was doing radio sketch shows, it was often, you know, you'd do something and there'd be like a French character in it and then people would do that French accent. You kind of go, can we just do it not in a French accent? Because <laughs> it's much, you yeah. lose all the nuance of the... Exactly. If you bring on a character, you lose the nuance yeah. of it. I think it's funny, the more sincere and truthful it looks, the, yeah. the funnier it is. Yeah. If it had been a, a character that looked like, you know, it's just someone acting, it's just not as funny, I think. It's, well, I was, uh, there's so many uh, brilliant ones. And I was watching the one where you were um, talking about Die Hard 5. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's just because it's beautiful. <laughs> it goes on and on <laughs> about how, on much you, how brilliant it looks. And yeah. But didn't, without saying anything bad about it, it completely pulls the film. Yeah, apart. I think Barry Shippey starts the sketch off <laughs> <laughs> saying that uh, it, he, thought he, was, uh, he thought he was watching the TV from across the room and he, he thought Bruce Willis was Jasper Carrot. <laughs> He thought Golden Balls had come back. <laughs> is that the name of the programme, yeah. Golden Balls? It is. Sounds like I'm making it up. <laughs> Golden Balls. It is yeah. based on the prisoner's dilemma. That, uh, is it? I think that's what What's it's the called. prisoner's dilemma? Yeah. It's the thing about whether you, if you have, both have an opportunity to have something, you can share it, or one of you can have it. If you, if you, what, if you both say you're... What is it? What, if you both say <laughs> you're... I mean, basically, it's what happens in Golden Balls. If you've got some money... I know, I didn't watch it. Then you can either choose to share it, in which case you'll get it. If you, if, if you both say... If you both say share, you get it. If you both I'm, say I'm steal, you don't get it. It's, it's a really good show, anyway, Golden Balls. <laughs> <laughs> you've made me wish it had come. I'm a big fan of uh, game shows. Do you? Watch you? Them? Do you watch them? Not you really. Watch Tipping Point? No. Uh, you'd like that. <laughs> that's, that's easier to explain than uh, Golden Balls. You know oh, those? do you know what I was thinking when you said Tipping Point? What? I was thinking of that lesbian drama. <laughs> tipping the Velvet. That... <laughs> different, that different That would make thing. a good game show as well. It's quite a different, <laughs> different kind of <laughs> late-night thing. No, it's, it's like, you know when you go to arcades and you put 2p in and it goes like that yeah, in the shelves? Yeah, that. Right. 
Oh, that's the game right. show I, love there. Th I love those things. Yeah, yeah. Two P things. I went on one. I went to Southwold. You must go if you, if you haven't right. been to Southwold because they've got some of those two P machines. Oh, great! I put like in one pound twenty, and I only got about ten P back. So oh. you can't. Sometimes there's a digital watch at the side. Yeah, I won. Uh, I won uh, little dice. Did you? And I won a crayon, and I won a sweet. You're really I won, good. I won a sweet, and uh, I ate the sweet, and I, when I unwrapped it, it was like completely stuck. And like, you know, like it when they've been really in there for decades. <laughs> it was in there for <laughs> and I said, my wife said, don't eat that. And I, 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 ate, <laughs> I, ate, I, ate, I ate it. But in Southwell Pier, you've got to go. Where is Southwell? It's like on, I don't know, it's near the uh, nuclear reactor. In, uh, <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> it's in uh, Suffolk. Uh, and it's near, what's that place called? The, the, uh, what's, the what's it called now? The, my brain's gone to jelly. I've done one of these. Chernobyl, it's near Chernobyl, that's where it's near. <laughs> and uh, there's a pier, but on the pier they've got this brilliant artist whose name escapes in the second, and they, put, they do loads of ar arcade games, but they're really weird things, like they, uh, like they put your, some, hair, some of your hair into yeah. it, and then it gives you a DNA analysis of it. It's a kind of joke that's thing. That's brilliant. It's like a joke thing. But right, it's, it's And so you though. pay loads of money for it, so it's like an arcade, but I you like get an those artistic things. experience. Yeah, I did one of those. It's Tim Hunkin, that's who it is, thank you very much. They're like Wikipedia, my yeah. idea. Good on. So not a very, not a very efficient Wikipedia. <laughs> so no, I don't like game shows. No, okay. <laughs> You're doing a uh, game show though, right? I'll do them, I'll go on. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Game Show is your new show. Oh, that one, yeah. Is, so that a, is that a game show or is that a show about a game show? It's, uh, well, we haven't sorted it out yet. Okay. <laughs> We're having a run through tomorrow. Oh, yeah. No. Tuesday. Um, <laughs> it, it'll have games in it. Yeah. And other stuff. Is it you and Mike Wozniak? Yeah. He's been on this, uh, on the, not, not the real one, the, the McCunther one. Not the real one. Uh, uh, so he's, he's not good enough to be on the real one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there anything you can tell us about that or is it all top secret? Top secret. Top secret, okay. I don't know. No. <laughs> You interview comedians as well. This is a yeah, little theme. sometimes, yeah. yeah. On the radio. On the radio. I've heard, yeah. I heard you on the way when I was coming back from a gig. The Did other you? Day. Yeah, I listened to you. Who was, was it? <sighs> oh, yeah. wasn't the American girl, was it? Yeah, it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a good one. <laughs> I knew it'd be that one. <laughs> she didn't seem one. to. She didn't seem to get quite get. Because it was talking. August, you see. There yeah. wasn't many comedians. <laughs> I'd have come on. I've been at home all the August. You could have had me on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> How'd you come up with your questions for the comedians that you have when you I'd have... I sit there, I think. Yeah. I've, well, I, th I used the uh, Have You Ever Seen a Ghost one as well. Yeah, we did that backstage. Have you yeah. ever seen a ghost? It was a really good answer. Yeah. I regret doing that. it backstage. <laughs> it's for the people who pay a pound. You get, you get, a, you get a secret channel. Or you can just ask me later. Yeah. She has she has seen a, she's seen a ghost and definitely has seen a ghost. Mm. It's worth a pound a month to yeah. find out about that. Uh, it's quite a hard coming up with questions, isn't it? For it really is. Yeah. I usually ask the same ones every year. Yeah, I do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but this time I've got... I'll, I'll ask this one because someone asked me to do this one. It, I've got a thing called Desert Island Dicks. Oh, brilliant. It's not what you're thinking, though. If you were a standard on a desert island, what eight Richards would you take with you? <laughs> it's a difficult question. It used, but it used there are a time. lot of Richards, there? are, aren't there? but it's kind of hard to bring eight to mind. It's easy to get about three, and then you'll find it's difficult, but I do... Oh, all I, I can do think sit. is Richard Maidley. Yeah, I definitely can have him. <laughs> he wouldn't be one of the eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm so there, I'm, I'm there. Oh, you're already yeah, on there? I'm there. So what, what, I need seven or another eight? You need another eight. I'm the, I'm the Shakespeare. Richard... I'm Richard the Shakespeare. third. Yeah, good. It's weird how that's the second time Richard, you've sat. Richard. There's two more What are the Richards ones. on her? Richard. <laughs> Richard Attenborough, he'd be brilliant you on the desert island. You're not allowed to ask the audience, that does not count. So that is <laughs> it's about whether Richard. you can think of eight different I Richards. I can only think of Richard. I know, it's difficult. Richard. I'm going to make this into a game show. <laughs> called How Many Richards Can You Think Of? It's kind of ruined. Later, Because people will prepare at home if they know. Yeah. If it's a game show, they'll come in and they'll have a list of a million Richards. <laughs> you should have some tense music playing. <laughs> I'll put that in later. Uh, OK, I'll ask one of the... So that's an old one, so we'll ask, that didn't work. So we'll ask no. you uh, a new one. Has anything you've written ever then come true? 
like in the case of Charlie Brooker writing about oh, David yeah. Cameron. Oh, yeah. God, it's like Nostradamus, thing. isn't he? <laughs> and then it turned uh, out he had done that. Well, it's sort of like Nostradamus, but re- re- prophesizing something that's already happened. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. isn't as good. No. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it. Uh, no, because I write, you know, stupid <laughs> stuff. <laughs> things that couldn't possibly... Yeah. Oh, just dull things. <laughs> <laughs> Two spiders could have come oh, to yeah, life. Oh, yeah, yeah. that stuff. God, you've really done I your know, homework, haven't you? Your That's my, most of your sketches are just two spiders <laughs> talking, talking about stuff. I like it, it's good. Um, uh, oh, great, I'll ask that one didn't work either. Okay, uh, <laughs> why can't everyone be babies? <laughs> because, well, we'd all die out, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, we would, but we were. It would be a great day, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be a great day. You wouldn't even remember. You're not even conscious as a baby, matter. are you? Wouldn't, wouldn't matter. We'd be oh, babies. No. It wouldn't matter. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think you are conscious as a baby. You're, you're not. You're not. You are. You're not. Like a like a seven month old baby. I don't think I was fully conscious until I was about nine. <laughs> What's, what's your earliest... I was re- You know the Guardian thing where they ask you what's your earliest memory? Someone's earliest memory was when they were seven years old. That yeah, can't that's be your <laughs> earliest memory. <laughs> <laughs> you remember going to school for, for seven years old. So, uh, yeah, that's so quite you, old. What's your... Because my earliest memory, I reckon I can remember the um, moon launch going in 1969. And I was uh, under two. I was two then. Yeah, no, you haven't. You just think you can remember. I think I can remember it. No, I don't think so. I don't, it's not just that I think I can remember it. <laughs> I think I can remember it. I, th- <laughs> I think you get confused as well with things you've seen. Yeah. You think they're memories, but they're not. They're photographs or things like that. Yeah. I think I, my earliest remember memory was... Um, I must have been about... Two. Mm. And it was reaching into... Uh, a toy, sort of. <laughs> I think it was like a wooden caravan. <laughs> that was one of my toys. <laughs> and putting bricks inside, and my brother taking the bricks out again, not understanding why he wasn't leaving them in. Right. Yeah, it's good, you know. It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a great anecdote, but uh, <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I wanted to know. I'm going to write it down as one of my emergency questions. Right. I wanna, but I wanna, what I want to find out is what is the. Um, what is the oldest that someone's been for their earliest memory? Oh, yeah, that's memory? a good one. That's what I want to find out, but that was different. So two for you. But what if they're in good. a coma? For well, the that thing? doesn't count. It's All like right. they're, they're like a normal person, nothing bad's happened to them. The problem is when I was starting to take the piss out on, this t- on Twitter, people said, well, people who've been through traumas in their oh, life right, yeah. will often forget their childhood. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'm probably better. Just play along. Probably <laughs> just having a laugh. <laughs> I was just taking the piss out of whoever. It was some singer or something. I can't remember who it was. Then the next week it was six. I thought, what's going on? Six years old. Do you remember anything before that? I remember when, I, definitely, because I, I can remember things before I was four, definitely, because I moved when I was four. Yeah. So I can remember stuff that happened before I was four, and one of my earliest memories is finding a, they're not going to be interesting, is finding a, uh, a bird that had fallen, a baby bird that had fallen out of a nest in the street. We've with all my done brother that, and sister, way. and then taking it home, and yeah. then it died. Oh. Yeah, it was sad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one more, one more, and then we'll go back to asking you about your interesting life. Okay. Uh, actually, you might do more than one. Uh, have you ever put your genitals in or near the mouth of a dead animal? <laughs> that was a waste of the... So that was a waste. Uh, as I like kettle crisps, but I don't think they're good as they used to be. Right? If you could travel back in time... What is happening? <laughs> if you could travel back in time... Uh, to compare any food of today with the, the original version of it in the past. <laughs> a... <laughs> what? Which food? <laughs> it's a new... It's a new... I'm running this one. It's a new one. Which food... Bring back... Bring back parking. Which yeah. food... Is there any food you'd like to taste how it tasted in the olden days? Like, I'd like to go to taste kettle crisps from five years ago and compare them to them well, now. they didn't have much in the olden days, did they? Well, you know, they did, but things have changed. They just had pies and... <laughs> yeah. That'd be a bit, would you like? I would be interested to go back and eat a pie from Richard III's day, wouldn't it? See would what you? They, yeah, it'd be interesting. Would you, it'd probably have less salt and preservatives. <laughs> it'd have less preservatives. It'd have more rotten meat inside it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're probably right. <laughs> on the whole, it's probably best. Uh, we don't need to actually. Well, I remember. Oh, I d- no. Are these the emergency questions? This is this is an emergency question that someone has paid to ask. 
They've paid? Yeah. How much? Um, quite a lot of money. God, it was on part of the Kickstarter. I hope I can answer uh, it. So Hugh O'Sullivan said, what is the most criminal act you committed as a child? Uh, I've stolen a few things. Yeah. <laughs> what um, was the most expensive of those most things? Most expensive. That would be the most criminal oh, thing. Oh, God. Probably uh, a pen. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember stealing a pen. Yeah. I didn't get caught. <laughs> Happy now? <laughs> you made the first mistake that many criminals make, which what? is submitting to your crime. <laughs> and now people can come and get you first. Uh, I, d I didn't, I, d I didn't, re I, start I started shoplifting when I was like in my 20s. Like yeah. embarrassingly too late. I, I had a few shoplifting things in my 20s Did as you? well. I still yeah. shoplift quite a lot of things. When, uh, <laughs> it's, it's around, the, yeah, the Ken Campbell era. Yeah. I was shoplifting cheese quite often. Right. There was a Waitrose and I didn't have much money, so I'd, I'd often nick some, just some cheese. Yeah. If you're going to steal it, though, you know, going to Waitrose is like... Yeah, get the good stuff. Well, I suppose, if you're going to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> What was the last thing you stole then? Um, Apparently, the, the most stolen thing in the supermarket are razor blades. Oh, really? Yeah. Because they're so no, expensive. They are too aren't expensive. They? They're really expensive. Well, that's why I steal things that I think are I'm too expensive. So if I feel a crime has been committed, mm. so I steal pick justice. And, pick and mix. I steal a lot of. Because <laughs> I feel like that's also there's a there's a line there where it's hard. Yeah. But the other day I did steal. A, I I was going to steal a pick and mix, and now I know because I've admitted it on this. And on Twitter, someone said, well, everyone in WH Smith is looking out for you, stealing pick and mixes, <laughs> which makes it more exciting, to be honest, <laughs> for me. Did they so I start, I start, when I'm going to, when I'm on the way to a service, I don't do it at a service station. When I'm on the way to a service station, I'll be honest, I say, I'm on the M1. <laughs> I'll tweet and say, I'm going to steal a pick and mix. It's like I'm taunting WH Smith. What, what pick and mix do you have? I like the, I, I forgot what they're called again, but they're like a bubble, they're like a cola bottle, but they taste sort of Oh, bubble. yeah, the fizzy ones yeah. are the non-sugary Well, they're things. sort of slightly fizzy, but they're blue and pink rather than cola bottles. Oh, those ones, yeah, yeah. they're good, yeah. Yeah, but the, the other day I went in and then I was going to steal one, then I got cold feet, so I put a packet, I thought I'd, I, they might be looking at me, so I, I'm, I did like a whole bag of pick and mix, and then I stole all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realised that's that is actually a that's a crime now. It's like when I've just stolen one, that isn't a Imagine crime. Imagine if you'd got caught. I know. It'd have been about. all over chocolate. <laughs> Richard Herring steals but pick I'm and doing mix. it to show. But is it morally? <laughs> is it is it worse to stolen uh, like fifty pick and mixes in fifty separate occasions, or just do twenty all at one? Or, you know, yeah, that's, right, yeah. I'm still I'm satirising myself there by doing <laughs> that. I'm potentially going to prison. Is it the thrill? Is it part I of the thrill? Also, the get? free the free the stuff. Free stuff. Yeah. The free sweet yeah. free sweets. Mm. It's mainly what I'm going for. <laughs> with that. Uh, no, that's that's revealed more about me okay. than it has about you. You stole a pen. <laughs> You stole a pen when you were a child. That is uh, <laughs> very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, don't steal stuff. It's really, it drives the price. The reason pick and mix are so expensive is mainly because I steal so many. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of exciting to know people are looking out for you. What do you think would happen if I got caught stealing pick and mix? Like one, one pick and mix. What, one sweet? Just eating one sweet. I think you just get a caution. Yeah, I think you would. <laughs> so, you know, but they would never, they wouldn't write that down anywhere. So you could go, they go, don't do it again. Yeah, if it was a whole bag, place. though, yeah. they'd take you into the back room. Yeah. <laughs> like Ken Campbell. <laughs> there men with lipstick. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, so, like, you used to uh, uh, box up worming tablets. Yeah. Is that genuinely true? Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. I've had an awful life. What, what, what amusing <laughs> things happen during... What worming tablets for uh, dogs? For dogs, worming stuff? tablets yeah. for dogs. You know, to stop them dragging their asses across the carpet. Yeah. That... Well, it was like 10 hours a day yeah. just doing that. That was counting, because like, there had to be like 10 packets in a box, so you'd yeah. have to count 10. ten, ten. Still, uh, for, for, for 10 hours? Steal that, steal them, couldn't you? You could have free, <laughs> many free worming tablets yeah. as you wanted. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you work doing worming tablets for? I, I only stayed there about a month. Yeah. Did uh, anyone last longer than a month? Were there people yes. there who'd been doing yeah, it for I years? I couldn't believe how soul destroying it was. You weren't allowed to sit down and you weren't allowed to talk. 
Because they said was this it was in the UK. <laughs> UK. This is yeah. communist. They said it'd slow you down. Right. And uh, the the woman who worked opposite me, she must have been late fifties. And I said, "How long have you worked here?" And she said, "About thirty years." I was like, "Oh, jeez." I said, "Why don't you run away?" <laughs> and she said, "Well, I've got a family. You know, I've got a family to feed. I can't." So it was a massive wake up call. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I uh, went back because it was a summer holiday job. Yeah. So uh, I really pulled my socks up when I went back to school, tried harder, you know, <laughs> then went to drama school, <laughs> blew it all. Um, and you write horoscopes? Yes, yeah, issue. Linda Cockshot's horoscopes. Do <laughs> you around. have any good ones coming up? Do you know what's happening in the it's future? I've done loads of them, you know, you? and uh, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I've got other stuff on the go. Yeah. I might do some more in the future. They're very funny. You Thank should, you. They are very, because like, it's, it, a lot of people do like a horoscope thing, mm. with a joke. Yeah. It's quite hard to do that it's, in a funny way. Yeah, it's hard to keep coming up with new yeah. ones as well. But they're very imaginative. Can you remember any of them? No. 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 Okay. You'd have to look, <laughs> look up on Standard Issue. There was, no, I can't, oh. I can't, I can't, do, I can't do them justice because they're really nicely written little things. <laughs> so I can't just approximate, so I won't. Uh, do you, uh, do you, are you any relate, do you, you know there's 12 Diane Morgans on IMDb? There's an artist, isn't there? There's, there's 12 actresses, but I think two of them are you. Uh, right. Because, uh, there's, there's one, did you see, um, when you Google Diane Morgan, you yeah. click on images, if you scroll down, there's a woman with just in bed with her arse out. <laughs> really close to my photos as well. <laughs> like, oh, it's awful. I might contact her until I did remove it. <laughs> She's got her arse hanging out of the yeah. bed. The, the writer of A Fishy Tale was Diane Morgan. Was that you? No. Okay. You were, but there's two, I think you're four and eight on IMDb, because you were in the Alan Partridge movie, right? Well, if you didn't blink. Yeah, but well, you're down as that. Isn't right. It? So that's, Wom someone, woman someone's in called crowd. you twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number, so you're number eight and number four. What does that mean? Of the diamond, there's, there's 12 diamond Do you mean there's, the a, there's a, who's number one? Not you, she was, there's one from like 1965, that's the thing, it's, got, it's a common oh, name. Oh. You've got to watch out. Uh, and when you do your interviews as, as Philomena Cunt, yeah, yeah. you know that's very close to cunt, right? And so there's, no. that could be rude, okay. Just turn, and spunk as well. It's like two rude words. Just be more careful in the future. Uh, <laughs> when you interview the academics and stuff, yeah. do they know what's going on, or do they? Are you just? Do they think they're being interviewed by a normal person? Uh, well, we we tell them as little as possible. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think one guy knew who's the the computers guy, because right. he was a big Charlie Brooker fan. Right. Uh, but he he played along. God bless him. But a lot, I think you could tell the others that just don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun, in, uh, you know, because they ac those academics. I've always enjoyed interviewing them because they're in their own little world. Absolutely. So you can yeah. ask something stupid, and then they will try and. I love it when they try and answer it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> and they go on for we we record for about an hour those interviews, so they cut down. Like you should right. see the stuff that doesn't go in. <laughs> uh, and some of them get really angry as well, like the last guy. On democracy, he looked like he was going to punch me. <laughs> Honestly, they had to stop filming and restrain him. And they said, can you not be so aggressive with Philomena? <laughs> I said, no, just let him be, let him be aggressive because it's funnier, isn't it? If he's, I wanted him to punch me just because it <laughs> would have made great TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're doing a sitcom with Andrew Lawrence. A radio sitcom, yeah. it's already done, yeah. Is it? Yeah, and Graham Fellows plays my dad. Oh, fantastic, I love yeah. Graham Fellows. Andrew Lawrence can't get on TV or radio because of, the, <laughs> of the conspiracy. It's the conspiracy against him as a white man he can't get on, <laughs> apart from all the stuff he does, he can't, but he can't, <laughs> can't do it. Are you playing his wife in it? His girlfriend, his girlfriend yeah, no. yeah. How's that, Is that sort of, it must be a fictional thing for him to have had. Uh, sorry, uh, how's... <laughs> <laughs> How, how is he all right? He's great. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I've just been worried about him. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't really know what's going on no. there. I know that there was some sort of Twitter thing yeah. with him. People were offended. 
but well, somebody no, I, said, I really, I think he's very funny. He's a very funny guy. Yeah, I think the thing is, he, he hates everyone <laughs> equally. You know, he doesn't just. More and women and ethnic people more than. <laughs> well, I didn't really get into that okay. with him. I should have asked him, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just interested. It was good fun. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? When's it coming out? October, mid October. Won't come out though because of the you know conspiracy against him. It won't. <laughs> It'll never. That'll never be on. Uh, pro- I'll probably cut that bit out, Diane. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> I'll probably cut it out. Uh, <laughs> I'll do an emergency question. I'll guess. Okay. That'll guess. That'll, that'll do this, a good one. Is this going well? I can't it tell. It is going. It is. I think it is going all right. <laughs> You seem, to be, to, you seem to be looking at that book a lot. I know, but that's what I do. That's my job. Oh, right. Yeah. Because I was listening backstage when Stuart was on. Yeah. And you didn't seem to be so... Well, you, know. you couldn't hear from backstage that I was looking at my book. I was. I was Were you? Yeah, I was really looking at it a lot. Because okay. he's, you know... Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was hard work. It was yeah. hard work with it. Um, what song would you like to replace our national anthem with? <laughs> because I don't think the national anthem is very good. No, it's awful, isn't it? Something that Jeremy I Corbyn wouldn't have sang it. You wouldn't have sang it? Nope. No. Even if you were the leader of the Labour Party? Yeah, even, even if I was, no. Right. Uh, what would I have? I'd have, uh, I believe, the children in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. George Benson well, no. or Whitney Houston version, then? <laughs> no, too much. It's the same <laughs> uh, so, uh, What would you have? Uh, well, I like. Well, I think just something comical and funny. I, I tell you what, I really like at the moment is because I've got a small child. Is yeah. Elmo's song from the from the <laughs> Sesame Street? Oh, that'd be perfect. It would be. Here he goes. Elmo song. It goes like that. It's, it's a song Elmo's made up. But you can change the Elmo to anything. That's what the whole point is. Because Big Bird's annoyed. So you can change it to England song. Yeah. So it could be England. So then it could be, if you want, like the Queen, you can go. Ah, 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 <laughs> the second song. Ah, 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 ah. Elmo's song. It's a very good song. <laughs> I, I like Elmo. Do you know the Muppet? You know Sesame Street? Did you ever watch it? I was more of a Muppet girl. Yeah, well, I was as well, but I do remember Sesame Street a bit. And, but now having a child, I watch uh, Sesame Street a yeah. little bit. Which I, lived, I used to watch kids' TV when I was just hungover <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning when I didn't have a child. That was wrong. Now it's okay for me to talk about this yeah. stuff. Elmo, I think, is brilliant. I love him. He's, he's which happy one was go that? Luck. Is that the one in a bin? There's one in a bin, isn't there? No, it's not him. I like him as well. But in Elmo, I don't like Big Bird. I think Big Bird is a bit of a prick. (laughs) In Elmo's song, Big Bird comes and goes, Oh, I wish I had a song as well. Write your own fucking song. (laughs) In in Elmo's song, he's going, Elmo starts singing the song, and and Big Bird goes, Ooh, it's quite good, isn't it? It goes like that. He's looking like he's trying to be encouraging, but he's actually being patronising. And then there's Mr. Snuffleupolis. I do not like him, and when he sings Elmo's song, he does a change, he goes, na 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 snuffy song, he does a little fake thing on the top of it. Does he? Yeah, I hate both of them. <laughs> I think it may be just the oversized Sesame Street characters are all pretty. What was the one in the bin? Oscar the Grouch, he's all right. Right, yeah, I like that one. There was the Count, Counted stuff. Yeah, I liked him. He was good. And but Elmo's great, Al- I think Elmo's my favorite character from literature. Because <laughs> he's very happy-go-lucky and he's nice and he shares his song yeah. and he, you can tickle him. He who, likes that. Who, who is your favourite Muppet? Uh, I like Janice from the band. Well, this is oh, yeah, the this is who I'd have sex with out of, the, out of the Muppets. <laughs> if I had to have sex with a Muppet. Was it the one with the long blonde yeah, hair? Yeah, blonde hair and quite big back. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if David Cameron had put his cock in uh, Janice from the Muppets' mouth, yeah. That wouldn't be a problem. No one would care about that. I think it'd still be weird. To be <laughs> if it came out, do you think people were saying that's you know the news? He's put his cock in the Muppets' mouth. <laughs> I'd love that. He's probably put his cock in all kinds of things. I was yes. o- I was at Oxford University at the same time. Oh as David right, Cameron. were you? Yeah, and I never did. I never put my cock even but like in a, w- a woman. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm quite jealous. But you must have. But, but this kind of stuff did go on, didn't it? I don't know. Well, I'd heard of the um, Bullingdon Club because all of my friends wanted to be in it, but there was no way he could be because he was like a comprehensive, comprehensive kid. And um, I think it's very hard to get into those things. But I hadn't, didn't really. I just mixed in a completely different world. Weirdly, the comedy was all on in the Oxford Union. So there was a, there was a co- weekly comedy club in the Oxford Union, which is where all those guys were upstairs. We were in a cellar right. downstairs. We could have, if we'd known. <laughs> We could have been like little Guy Fawkes and blown yeah. them all up, taken yeah. them all out. Because they were all there. B- Boris Johnson was there, Cameron, I think Osborne was there, I'm yeah. not sure. 
So um, are there any photos? In fact, they were trying to get hold of the photos. The photos of Cameron and the pig? Yeah. I think that would sort it out, wouldn't it? That yeah. Would, that, by, by the time this comes out, maybe they'll know. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Would you <laughs> <laughs> Just, would you love to see a picture of David Cameron's penis in a pig's yes, mouth? Yes, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it happened. Do you not? No. Of course it did. I don't think it did. So you want it to happen, and so you think it's happened, but I don't, it's no, been made just, up by a horrible I, man. You just see it in his eyes. <laughs> But even if it did happen, he didn't have sex with a pig, he just put his penis in a dead pig's mouth, which is very but which different. Is, but, well, <laughs> technically, though. <laughs> Not having sex with it. Yeah. I feel so sorry for David Cameron, and I never thought that would happen. Do you? Yeah. Why? Because I think the guy who's done it to him is a much bigger cunt than he is, and so we should be having to go at him. Yeah, well, they're both and, cunts. And I also think it's... <laughs> they're both, they are both cunts. Thank but, you, um, thank you, yes. But also, I just don't think you should be able to just say something about someone and then it becomes true without seeing the photo. Or, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I've made jokes about Debbie McGee, so I can't really count. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the photos. But. So, you know, but it's, you know, it's kind of, it's a weird, weird, <laughs> weird What have you situation. said about Debbie McGee? <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't say any more. We're going to have to cut two bits now. <laughs> Uh, all right, look, I'm going to come up with it. This is this is going to this is going to blow you up. Oh, well, go on then. Have you ever? No, this. I'm really. I'm, I'm interviewing uh, Grace and Perry later in the. Series. Are you? Yeah. Like wow. that's, that's how. That's the caliber of people we get on here. It's very exciting. Very exciting. But I'm very interested in modern art, and I I kind of create artistic pieces. I I feel. <laughs> uh, do you ever come up with ideas for? Because it's kind of the same as comedy, and it? it's just putting two things together. Well, I used to. I used to. I nearly went to art school. Did you? There you yeah, go. yeah. It was um, it was either drama school or art school. And at the last second, I decided to go to drama school. But I've painted a lot in the past. What, what kind of stuff did you paint? Oil paints, portraits. Was it sold a realistic? lot of stuff. Did you? Yeah. That'd be worth a lot of money though. Isn't that? It's like Hitler. Yeah, I know. I feel like having no. something owned by Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Done by Hitler. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> Similar thing. Yeah. Uh, what kind of what? What kind of stuff were you painting? Faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite good. Yeah. I might go back to that at some point, you know, when it all goes tits up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen, no? That's oh, good. it might. Yeah, it might do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could happen to any of us. That's the problem. We don't know. We yeah. don't know. You've yeah. been doing... Oh, well, I saw you doing this... Um, you recently you've done this uh, parody of the couples, is it the couples? Couples, couples yeah, the couples. Called the wankers. Yeah. Which is worth... <laughs> You do, but you do quite a lot of uh, sort of short film for the stuff. Do you? Is that fair to say? Or I like a lot of short films because I think you know, after a minute you're bored, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we specifically made them really short so that you know, because when I start watching someone's short film, if it's over like three minutes, I'm like, come on. <laughs> so uh, that's why I like them. I like them short. Yeah. I'm wearing a Cooper's jacket. It's hypocritical, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think it is, because you're parodying the, ad, you're parodying the advert, adverts of it, not But the I'll buy their clothes. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, OK. I like Marmite, but I do a joke about not liking Marmite in my re current show, because it's funnier to say I don't <laughs> like Marmite. I've been, invi but I've been invited to be... I can't believe this is true, right? Because yeah. I've mentioned Marmite at some point in my past. Someone's got in touch asking me if I'll be some kind of like ambassador for Marmite. Really? Uh, and it's not like a paid thing. It's like you go on some website and you say, do you like Marmite? And the reward for doing it is a lifetime supply of Marmite. <laughs> but, I mean, how do they work that out? Because I eat a lot of Marmite. <laughs> you know, the big tubs of Marmite. You know, if I have the little thing of Marmite, that's about enough Marmite for one piece of toast for me. Yeah, it sounds like they're going through your bins or something. <laughs> <My bins. laughs> That's, I'm, cause I'm, that's great, though, I'm kind of interested to work out. I'm, I'm still going to say yes because I want to work out yeah, how much a lifetime The face of Marmite. I don't think I'd even be the face. I think I'd just be a mysterious figure. <laughs> I'm called upon, you know, maybe if there's a situation where Marmite's in trouble, they would call <laughs> me out to go, no, Marmite is good. If you could be the face of anything, what would yeah. it be? Um, <laughs> uh, um, having sex with Gemma Chan from. Uh, humans. <laughs> I'd be the face of that. I was thinking more of a product. <laughs> <laughs> just when anyone's talking about having sex with Jeff and Jeff from robots, from humans, <laughs> I just come on and talk about it. Do you think you should be allowed to have sex with robots? Because uh, it's a big controversial subject now. There's, there's I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it is. 
Yeah. See, my wife really disagrees. I think it's going to drive us Why? apart. Why? She would see it as being unfaithful. Um, I mean, it's not going to happen for oh, 50 right, years. Yeah. But they're not. It's a robot. It's not a human being. Yeah. It's like women, most, a lot of women use vibrators, don't they? Yeah. And that is like a robotic... That's like a robot, and they've just gone, <laughs> don't bother with the rest of it, mate. It's okay. <laughs> so, so I know just chuck that lot away. I think that is more offensive <laughs> to men and robots than having, you know, just at least go, uh, put, go through the pretense of having the bloke there as well. But he, he knows about it, yeah. and, and it's the same one all the time. Yeah. So I think it's different if it's like, if you're sleeping with loads of I'm different robots. I'm not talking about going out and having sex with hundreds of robots. So you've got your own personal yeah, robot. One robot. She knows about it. Well, yeah, she would. Well, I would be honest. Be fine. About it. Yeah. Well, not if she says it's not fine, though. You can't come into our marriage <laughs> and say, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, Katie. Don't worry. That's let him have his fun with I'm his sure robot. I'm sure she'd rather the robot than, you know. Yeah. But I think I'd get a robot that you could change the face of and stuff. <laughs> It opens up an ethical debate, doesn't it? Because like in the future, it's beyond our, my lifespan anyway. Your uh, poor unfortunately, wife. Is that you'll be able to choose anyone and who owns the? If someone wants to have sex with me and I don't want to have sex with them, they can make a the robot of me, just like and then bang, and they're having sex with me. And then that ha what? What about my copyright of my own image? I don't want people having sex with me. What if someone wants to have sex with me and then they get a robot of me? And then they have filmed the robot having sex with them and then say that was Richard Henry having sex with me. But people might be having sex with your image right now. <laughs> you don't be. know. You can't stop them. I can stop. <laughs> well, it's interesting because masturbation is that in your, you know, you fantasise about someone. So that's interesting. That's an interesting dilemma. I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you could use that, you know, if you think how awful trolls are now, for example... Imagine if they had access to a robot of someone, they could do all sorts of horrible things to it. Oh, they? right, yeah. And then so they could use it as an, a way to abuse an actual person. Mm. Yeah. So if you but had a robot, then yeah. whose face would you put on it? Uh, Gemma Chan. From <laughs> Gemma Chan. <laughs> the moment. What was like your first celebrity crush? The um, earliest one that you can remember. I, uh, that I really liked. Um, I think there was someone before this, but I, I, I really liked um, the blonde one from ABBA. The blonde one. The blonde one. Yeah. <laughs> the blonde one. Can't even remember her name. I didn't know her name at the time. Agnita. Uh, and then I liked Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> and Nana Muscuri. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of singers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the blonde one from Sweet, who was a man. Uh, Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly. Brian, Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly. <laughs> Brian Connolly. <laughs> you had a crush on Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I don't understand. Brian Connolly from the suite. Not Brian Connolly. Oh right, not like <laughs> it's Brian a puppet, Brian not Connolly. him. <laughs> right, okay. Who was your right? Who was your first celebrity? Finally. Thank you. Uh. Dave Allen. Was it? Yeah, yeah. That's, good. that's a good choice. It sort of still is. Yeah. It's like, you know, I never really got over him. Yeah. Oh. I know it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> I love Dave Allen. He's amazing. I mean, not, not in that way. <laughs> I, I also <laughs> quite like the, uh, the spiff from Dad's Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's, is it James Walker or was that the character? That was James, the character? James Speck. Uh, but Beck, James Beck. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's, he, was it before he died or after he died? <laughs> he died very young. You, might, you weren't alive when he died. Probably not. I don't know what year did he die. I, don't I, like know. Him. I, was, I was alive at the time. Well, I, I liked him when he was alive anyway. Did he? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, there's lots of flies. Right. Just here. There's just sort of a disgusting cesspool. Uh, and however much you clean up, there are terrible uh, flies all over the place. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, look, um, I'm going to ask you about a question that I have thought of for a long time. I wish I'd asked you about the ghosts out here, yeah. but I'll ask you this instead. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? <laughs> it was a gamble. <laughs> it was a terrible gamble. Do you come up with terrorist ideas? Because Charlie Brooker had some good ones. Do you come up with plans to wipe out lots no, of human beings? No, I, I wouldn't know how to do that. Yeah, but just I can't even fancy. drive. <laughs> 
That's a good one, though. You could drive. I mean, you could do more damage with a car. Than you yeah, could drive over people. Yeah. Back over. No. <laughs> <laughs> you must never learn to drive. That would be a terrible. And then you might be able to run some people over the car. What do you think is worth <laughs> worse, bestiality or necrophilia? Which is Be- what bestiality? Worse? Yeah, having sex with an animal or having sex with a dead person or animal. Uh, and the, the um, animals. Yeah, yeah, definitely bestiality. Yeah, really. I think so because they're alive, aren't they? I know, but then and there's the, no. you know, I don't know. Maybe they enjoy it. They don't care. <laughs> They don't care. They don't remember. Yeah, no, no, I'm going with the other one. Okay. Necrophilia. They're both bad. It's worse. <laughs> but why can't everyone be babies, though? <laughs> we just, we don't need to be great. I don't just think it'd babies. work. No. <laughs> we be friends. We'd starve to death. I know, it doesn't matter. Sort of does, though. We'd <laughs> die <laughs> out. It would be fun for the day. For the day. There wouldn't, we wouldn't yeah, know, exactly. Wouldn't be who'd change their nappies? There wouldn't be any nappies because we'd be babies, and there wouldn't be anyone who would put the nappies on. You'd just poo in the sh- in the ground. And it'd be beautiful. That's how nature is. <laughs> just wee yourself. They don't care, babies. I tell you, they're like, Th- This is much stranger than I thought it was. Is would. it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's partly because the audience are just sitting there staring at us like we mm. they've been forced to come in here. It's. <laughs> It's like a dream. It's it like is a, like, it's a, like dream. a bad dream. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is very much like that. <laughs> this will run it round. Do you have a favourite towel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's I think everyone like? does. Yeah. Well, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Well, when you first buy them, they don't sort of absorb, do they? You have to wash them a few times. You know, if you first buy a towel, when you first use it the first few times, it just moves the water around, doesn't it? It doesn't soak it up. So you've got to find one that's like, you know, a good few months, not too old, but not too new. Yeah. You know, and it's good size. I like I a bath sheet. Mine. Yeah, well, I like the big ones, but I stick, when I got a favourite, I stick with it. Yeah. How, uh, through thick and thin, literally. Would you ever wash it? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, I, you know, if it's in the washing machine, I use a different towel, but right. it's still my favourite towel. I'm yeah. thinking, this isn't my favourite towel, the yeah. one I'm using. I'll be glad when my favourite one's back. Is it, is it more of a comfort blanket? No. Oh. It's just I like it. and we, I, It knows my body. <laughs> it's it learnt the contours, <laughs> where the dampness gathers, and uh, it <laughs> just does the job. Are you a fan of memory foam? Memory foam? No, no. No. Are you? Never tried it. No. <laughs> if you could assassinate any public figure Ooh, yeah. and get Go away on. with it, who would you choose to kill? I've just got just one person. You can do, I could do a few. <laughs> I I would probably go for well say if I had like one bullet yeah I'd line three people up okay. <laughs> so that hopefully you'd get them all yeah Cameron uh, Ian Duncan Smith oh, and Ian uh, Smith. what's the other fucking <laughs> arsehole yeah, yeah he definitely hey Hunt. no the other one with the eyes <laughs> Michael Gove no, the that's who I've got. Osborne, yeah, Osborne. Osborne. Just conservative. Those three. <laughs> I had the chance to kill uh, Michael Gove. Did you? Yeah, oh, I had several chances, but I saw him unarmed, un- unprotected in the. Oh. So what would you have done? Did I had a beer bottle. I could have smashed him in the face with it. He was with his kids. Oh and, you no. know, Also, I'd have it's got to prison. It's not fair on them, is it? Then. <laughs> yeah. To see their father bludgeoned to death. Yeah. I mean, even if your dad's Michael Gove, you mm. still got to. There must be some residue of love in there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting to see. It was interesting. And then I, you know, I tried to write about it in the Metro, because I write for the Metro. Yes. They wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let me write about it in the Metro. The fact that I, I was regretting <laughs> the fact that I could have killed Michael Gove. I think because they thought I was revealing that Michael Gove walked around without bodyguards, and therefore someone might go, Oh, right, Ooh. that's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> ah. But, you know, give him a body. I mean, if anyone needs a bodyguard... Not yeah. from terrorists and stuff, just from anyone in the street. Yeah. Michael Gove's the worst one, I think, out of all of them. Mm, yeah. No, yeah, actually, no, sure. Osborne is. Osborne's Osborne. Definitely, uh, Osborne. 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 He's like a snake, isn't he? His eyes. He's disgusting. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know any stories about him that I could tell you, because uh, 
Was he there at the same time? He, I think he was, but he, I, there, if, he must be shitting himself about becoming Prime Minister, because if he becomes Prime Minister, there's a lot more stuff that, that someone like Ashcroft could say about him than... Oh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. There's, there, there's sort of semi stuff on record about him, but he's... Yeah, I bought the stuff about the pencils. Uh, well, there's, there is the stuff about the pencils. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's on record, uh, but uh, the pencils, pencil Osborne, pencils Osborne, uh, is. But that, but then that's what's interesting about it is if there are these figures who pay for the the parties and they can reveal, you know, they have them in that thrall. That's what's that's what's terrifying about it is the people behind the scenes. So if Osborne becomes prime minister, yeah. he must be always worrying that he's going to be revealed for what he is, mm. the most awful man alive. Oh, assassinated. Uh, and, and so therefore, you know, these people have a power over them to do whatever they want them to do, don't they? Mm. So that's the terror. So it's not about people, it's about the people with the money and with the stories that they've made them do these things. And then, I think, so, you know, I think, I think it's because it's so funny, the idea of a man who has a slightly red and weird face putting his cock in a pig's mouth. <laughs> it's hard to get beyond that mm, and think is, about yeah. the implications beyond it. Yeah, I don't think anyone could think of anything else, no. could they, for a good three days. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever come up with a good uh, zombie film idea? My one's having wombles as zombies or I've babies I've never really zombies. been into zombies. No. no, or vampires. I like. I mean, I like vampires from the 70s, but not like modern American young teenage vampires. I'm sick of them. There's a lot of them. There's too many. And a lot of zombies. Yeah. What if the zombies were babies, though, or wombles? <laughs> what if they were baby wombles? What if zombies were baby wombles? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what then? <laughs> what then, Diane? What then? Well, I mean... Were you not prepared for that question? No. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got coming up in the near future? Because we're going to have to stop talking to you in a second. OK, uh, I've got... Um, I'm doing a sitcom. Uh, Joe Wilkinson. Oh yes. Beardy Joe has written a sitcom with David Earl. Oh yes. Called Rovers. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be in that. Good. That's November sorted. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to do more stuff with Joe, like the, as the double act, or? As the I doubt it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's really good. He's too busy. He won't be busy for no, long. No, I. He'll be fine. You know. Well, you you, you want to do other things yeah. though, don't you? I mean, I'd love to work with him again. But maybe do something different, you know. Yeah. Keep it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming along. My pleasure. And having a bad dream with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a dream for me. And a terrible dream for me. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, give Mass Rand's Brothers Diane Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We'll be back next time with Lee Mack and Jamie Gotham to come along next week. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>